Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Just opened up the room. So we'll let people come in, give a couple minutes. As you join us, feel free to uh, introduce yourself in the chat, uh, say hello if you're here with an organization. Uh, it's always nice to know who's joining us for webinars since we don't get to see all of your faces all the time. All right, well, let's get started. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> uh, my name is Clara Lekshak. I'm the Executive Director of Sustain Dane. Welcome to the Building Energy Savings Lunch and Learn. I'm really glad that you are here. Thank you for joining us. Sustain Dane's mission is to inspire, connect, and support people to accelerate equity and sustainable actions for community well being. We help businesses, we help organizations and individuals prioritize and implement sustainability projects. And we do all this work with the lens of holistic sustainability, the intersection of environmental health, equity and social well being, and a just economy. I'd like to recognize the incredible ongoing program partners and supporting forest and tree level members that makes Sustain Dane's work possible. Membership is a great way to join the Sustain Dane network and support our, support our work. Also a thank you to our LEAF members. There is a place for everyone in the network. And also a special note is as you go into the holiday season and end of your giving, please consider supporting businesses and other organizations that are prioritizing sustainability and working to improve the climate. We have one program announcement. Um, our next program, our last program of the year will be next week, Tuesday, the Sustainable Breakfast Series. We're gonna be focusing on food scraps, year in review and future opportunities. The program will be between 8.30 to 9.30 with networking before and after, and it'll be held at the Starting Block Building. You can register at the Sustained Aid website. All right, on to our program today. So cities across the country are creating programs to improve building energy efficiency, achieve their climate goals. And the panel we brought together today is gonna to share their experience in this work. Uh, they're gonna talk about benchmarking and tune-ups. They're gonna talk about the tools they're already using, impacts they're seeing, and ideas about how this could look and, and could work in our own community here. So thank you for being here. I'm gonna pass it over to Molly now, who will be our moderator. Hello, everyone. Um, just wanted to quickly introduce myself and I'll let the panelists introduce themselves. I'm Molly Janis. I'm based out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, um, which is, of course, not in Wisconsin. Um, I work with uh, cities on benchmarking policies and programs um, in Minnesota and Michigan. Um, and I am a program development uh, manager with the Center for Energy and Environment, which is a Minnesota-based nonprofit. Um, we work regionally. Um, we have research engineering uh, program implementation services, and I'm on the team that tries to develop new, new business and priorities for the company. So I'll just start by um, defining some terms, since we are talking about benchmarking in um, the city of Madison. I want to make sure that everybody's on the same page with what we mean by energy benchmarking. Um, energy benchmarking is a method used to determine whether a building is using more or less energy than its peer facilities. Um, with similar occupancies, climates, and sizes. So it really does attempt to get an apples to apples comparison on the energy performance of your building. Benchmarking can quickly identify properties that need greater attention to utility costs. Um, and so the other piece, so that's what we mean by energy benchmarking. Um, as I understand it, we also want to define tune up. Um, because um, that could potentially be a part of the program that the city of Madison is uh, is developing. 
So a tune-up um, is something similar to when you tune up your car or your bike. Um, you want to tune up your building to check energy systems um, and make sure that they are scheduled appropriately, like your lighting and your HVAC controls. And, and this is a best practice, like energy benchmarking is to do every couple of years. Ben energy benchmarking is sort of a continuous improvement practice. Tune-up is as well, just a little bit uh, further apart. So when we talk about building tune-ups and benchmarking, that's what we mean. Um, so I have worked with uh, about five cities across uh, the Midwest, upper Midwest on benchmarking. And um, the process of benchmarking your building takes, we usually say about two to four hours the first year um, and then less time afterwards because you have to set up your property one time and then um, your energy usage um, takes a lot less time to enter um, as you go on. So it's a couple of hours a year at max. Um, and, you know, why do we do all of this? Because what we um, don't measure, we don't manage. Um, and that's a, a mishmash of what Ian said very intelligently a few weeks ago. Um, but that's that's the the bread and butter of it. Um, just like we think about, um, you know, price per square foot when we're looking at new real estate. Uh, we want to take think about energy use per square foot or energy cost per square foot in order to proactively manage our um, our buildings. Um, so in other cities, actually the one that I've worked with the closest is St. Paul, Minnesota. When we have passed a requirement to benchmark um, and didn't include a tune-up requirement, that is something I think that's quite innovative and um, forward thinking about the Madison policy. We've had 90% compliance um, this past year. Even during the pandemic, it was still in the 80% compliance in terms of the buildings that were covered by the policy. 80 to 90 plus percent of them um, have complied um, and they confirm that it, it's not particularly hard. Um, so now we have about 40 cities across the U.S. that have benchmarking policies, 40 cities, counties, states, several states have passed statewide requirements. Um, so this is not only a best practice that's been um, used in the business sector for, for many years, um, decades even, it's also a best practice in terms of city policies and programs to manage energy and climate change. Um, so I will pause there and let the other panelists introduce themselves. Thank you so much for having me. I should start with someone. Um, how about Jessica? Would you like to introduce yourself? And then maybe each person as you introduce, pick the next person in line so that we don't have too many hiccups. Great, thanks Molly. And hello everyone, thanks for joining today. I'm Jessica Price. I am the Sustainability and Resilience Manager in the Mayor's Office for the City of Madison. And I've been, um, talked with us about energy benchmarking and tune-ups and, and the program that we're working on before you probably uh, see my face around. And I'm really excited to, you know, see some familiar names on the on the Zoom today and um, and some new folks. So welcome everyone. I'm look, really looking forward to this conversation. And I'll popcorn over to Ian. Unmuting would help. Hi, everyone. My name is Ian McIntosh. I'm the program director or a program director at uh, the Office of Interdisciplinary Professional Programs, um, also known as Interpro at University of Wisconsin-Madison uh, College of Engineering. Um, there, I uh, direct several courses um, in um, you know, engineering-related courses for professionals and um, Many of them are also included in this facilities and building system segment, which building commission is a part of. And today we're going to be talking about tune-ups and benchmarking. And so tune-ups is uh, an integral part of what we call building commissioning. So hope, looking forward to talk more about that. And um, thank you for your time here today. I'll popcorn over to Jill. Hi, I'm Jill Stronsky. I work for a CUNA Mutual Group, uh, basically a financial services insurance company here in Madison. And I am part of the workplace experience department, which is formerly known as facilities. So I'm the person on this panel that actually is responsible for entering the data into Portfolio Manager. So I enter data into Portfolio Manager for basically 10 buildings. Um, 
I have four of them are in Madison, and then I have a total of 37 different energy meters that I have to enter data for every month. And I will pass it to Anne. Thank you, Jill. I'm Anne White with Wangard Partners. Uh, Wangard is a commercial real estate developer and property management firm in southeastern Wisconsin and the greater Midwest. We develop, own, and manage multi-tenanted office buildings, retail centers, industrial buildings, and multifamily communities throughout Wisconsin. Uh, we've been benchmarking our multi-tenanted office buildings in Energy Star Portfolio Manager since 2009. So I've been doing that for over a decade now. Uh, we started to benchmark to understand the energy use and costs for utilities in our buildings. Um, so yeah, we have a, a long way to go and looking forward to being a panelist today. That sounds great. Um, I will be leading some questions. And I'm pretty sure that if you, the audience, have questions, you can put them in the chat. What's the instruction for audience? You can use um, chat or the Q&A. OK, perfect. So yeah, just at the bottom of your Zoom screen there, you'll see a button for Q&A and a button for chat. Looks like you all are introducing yourselves, which is great. Um, I will go ahead and kick it over to Jessica. Jessica, can you tell us why Madison is proposing um, a building energy program like this? Um, and what are the key elements of the program that you're proposing? Sure, and thanks, Molly. Um, yeah, so kind of taking it from the top around our um, the program that we've been working on, this, at the City of Madison here um, and the Sustainability and Resilience Program, we've been doing outreach for more than a year to really inform our approach to um, you know, building energy efficiency and finding something that's a good fit um, for our community. And so um, you know, the, the really big picture here is climate change. So experts say that the world needs to cut our emissions um, by more than half by 2030. That's just seven years from now. Um, in order to avoid, you know, some of the most devastating impacts of climate change. Um, those are the really biggies. I'd like to stress, you know, at the top that we are already experiencing the impacts of climate change. We're seeing those here in the Midwest in the forms of flooding, um, more intense rainstorms, more in frequent and intense um, high heat events. And these trends are going to continue and we really need to cut our emissions um, to limit those impacts. Um, and that's a really smart choice, both from our well-being and our health perspective, but also from an economic perspective. And so to really um, address climate change at the pace and scale needed, you know, we all have to, we all have to act. Every level of government, every individual, every business really needs to be part of the solution. And so in Madison, we've set this ambitious goal of reaching 100% renewable energy and net zero carbon emissions for city operations by 2030. So we're really wanting to lead by example there and community wide by 2050. And to get there by 2050, we have to start working on things now. We need to be reducing greenhouse gas emissions across all of the sectors. Um, and we have to start taking those steps and those actions today. And so currently, you know, our community-wide um, greenhouse gas inventory tells us that nearly half of the emissions in Madison are coming from our buildings. And so that's our existing building stock. Um, by the time we need to reach our 2030 goal and our 2050 goal, most of those buildings are already built. They're already in our community. And so how those buildings are operating is really important. And so of that um, you know, big chunk that's coming from buildings, the commercial building sector is 30% of our total emissions. And so a key strategy for reducing emissions um, in, our, in our community is to really improve the energy efficiency of our commercial buildings. I think some of our experts here are um, have a lot of experience and knowledge to really understand that improving efficiency is kind of the low hanging fruit for reducing emissions from buildings. We know that there's a lot of opportunity there. And so that's one of the reasons we've started to develop this building energy savings program. And so, we're, or BESP, um, if we have to, I think we have to put an acronym for everything um, that's coming out of um, any level of government these days. And so 
the building energy savings program is really aimed at um, helping large commercial building owners and managers identify opportunities to increase energy efficiency, which saves money and reduces the carbon footprint of their buildings. And so the really um, important thing to remember about energy efficiency is it has these multiple benefits. So not only does it reduce emissions by just using less energy, energy saved is money saved. Um, more efficient buildings um, operate more efficiently. They have better asset value. They're more comfortable for tenants and they're more resilient. Um, and so it's really a kind of co-benefits of improving efficiency. And so um, as part of the program, so getting a little bit into the details, and there's a lot more <laughs> details, it's just the tip of the iceberg, but broad brushstrokes, um, you know, the program, um, as part of the program, non-residential commercial buildings that are 25,000 square feet and larger will need to benchmark their energy use annually using Energy Star Portfolio Manager, um, like Jill mentions. And benchmarking has been shown um, to provide an energy savings of about a little less than two and a half percent a year, but that savings accrues year over year, up to eight to 10% energy savings in buildings that are benchmarking. And so it really does make an impact, but it's very low cost and, um, and, and very quick to do, um, as we've mentioned. And in addition, um, non-residential commercial buildings, 50,000 square feet and larger, will need to tune up their building energy systems once every four years. And as, um, as Molly mentioned, it's like tuning up your car or tuning up your, um, uh, tuning up your bike. It's making sure that it's operating, it's doing its job, it's meeting all of the building needs without wasting energy. And so, um, Again, tune-ups can really start to catch these unnoticed issues that can waste a lot of energy. For example, if some parts of the year, um, your air conditioning and your, and your heating might be fighting one another. That uses a lot of energy, but it's not actually doing any, it's not improving the way that your building operates. It's not performing an important function. And so on average, data tells us that tune-ups can save 10 to 15% in a building's energy use. And again, that energy saved is dollars saved. Um, and so, um, you know, but just as a reminder, the program is more than just these requirements for large buildings. It's really designed to connect building owners and managers with information, resources, and assistance to successfully benchmark and tune up and receive those energy savings, um, but also to start folks or help folks continue on a path to energy efficiency that's right for their buildings. And so um, we'll have a help desk to provide one-on-one -on -one assistance, um, free trainings, as well as reports and communications, really providing a lot of information to connect folks with technical and financial resources. Um, and the timing is really great for a program like this. It's sort of never been better. Um, benchmarking and tune-ups really provide folks with foundational information to take next steps to improve energy efficiency, the very kind of next steps that we're seeing a lot of um, things like rebates, um, financial assistance, um, tax incentives, financing coming through from um, state and federal programs like the Inflation Reduction Act. Um, and so if you have this benchmarking and tune-up information, then that tells you kind of how you can take advantage of those um, of those resources. And so I'm really excited to be here today um, to hear from folks with, that have this experience, this on the ground experience and expertise um, with energy benchmarking and tune-ups to really just um, you know, share, uh, share their knowledge. Great. Um, gonna riff off of the business case for benchmarking a little bit and ask Jill, when did you at CUNA Mutual start benchmarking and why? We have, um, actually, I'd say we benchmark in some form since like the year 2000, but we did it through our engineering partner. Um, so it was not an internal in-house operation. It was um, part of sort of our partnership with the engineering firm. And then in 2013 was our first year of doing Energy Star. And then in 2019 is when I decided that to take over basically um, entering the data instead of giving it in the form of all of our bills to the engineering company who entered it all into portfolio manager and then verified the data. So in 2019 is when I started taking over it and then worked with the basically 10, 10 different properties that we now have in Portfolio Manager. Great. 
Fantastic. Um, I will kick it over to Anne um, for a little bit more detail on how businesses use these tools. Um, are you tuning up your buildings or undertaking similar work? And if so, um, what has been useful for you about benchmarking, tune up, et cetera? How does that um, fit into your business? Thanks, Molly. Um, as I mentioned, we've been benchmarking our office buildings since 2009. It helps us identify energy use spikes, if there are any, or uh, increased costs on a monthly basis. And in benchmarking, it provides us the ability to correct whatever is wrong if there's something wrong with the HVAC or the lighting systems quickly before uh, costs start to add up. Um, and yes, we do period periodically review our office building set points, our system narratives, sequence of operations for accuracy and how they compare to the actual building operations. Uh, we've also created uh, what we call a quick start guide that contains contact information for all of our service providers and vendors, the building layout, tenant stacking plans, user manuals for all the equipment that's in the building. Um, it contains a systems narrative sequence of operations. So that way, if one of our maintenance engineers is on vacation or out sick, another engineer can come in and they have everything that they need to run the building right at their fingertips. So this, again, saves costs and minimizes any downtime that one of our facility engineers may have in getting familiar with the building. Um, we Energies is our uh, utility provider here in the Milwaukee area. And for larger commercial users, we Energies will come out and do an energy audit on your building almost for free. Um, if they find any low or no cost energy conservation measures that the building could implement, if you implement those within two years, then the energy audit is free. Otherwise, it's, it's 200 bucks. Um, and as for building tune-ups, we periodically do nighttime building walkthroughs. Uh, we do it at night when there's no occupants, so that makes it easier for us to listen for fans or equipment that may be running, that shouldn't be running, look for lights that are on that should be off. Um, we also enlist the help of our cleaning company to help with our sustainability initiatives. Our cleaning company closes our blinds every night in all the tenants' offices to help reduce the solar heat gain. Um, and I guess in my opinion, the two biggest benefits of benchmarking our buildings so far has number one, uh, demonstrating OneGuard's commitment to sustainability through a third party certification process like Energy Star labeling or a LEED certification. And then it's also being able to quickly provide uh, ten our tenants that uh, air information about carbon and greenhouse gas emissions and electrical use for their own needs. Uh, for, for instance, one of our largest tenants was submitting a response to a request for proposals. And one of the questions that they had to respond with is, what are you doing to lower your emissions? Well, part of a tenant's emissions is the space that they lease within the building. So that comes back to us, you know, what are you doing as a landlord to help us with our own uh, ESG and sustainability initiatives. Um, so yeah, we find benchmarking extremely useful. It's easy to do. Um, like you mentioned at the beginning, you know, the setup, getting the building set up is the most difficult part, but then afterwards it's maybe 15 minutes of, of work every quarter or so. I mean, I, I, updated our Energy Star for one of our buildings this week, and it took me longer to download the bills off the We Energy's website than to actually type it in to Energy Star Portfolio Manager. So yeah, I, I definitely, we definitely find benefits in, in benchmarking and building tune-ups. Fantastic. Yeah, and um, I think from Anne's description, you can see how benchmarking is kind of a foundational best practice, and then they've built these other best practices on top of that um, to help them identify energy waste and also to get 
um, recognition and work with tenants on energy efficiency, which is fantastic. Um, I'm going to pop over to Ian because um, I think we could talk about the business case all day. Um, I'll circle back on that. Um, Ian, um, tell us a little bit about how you as a professional um, in energy efficiency services and as, a, as someone who trains and shares information with folks who are learning those techniques, um, how do you think about building tune-ups? Um, what are they? Um, why should folks do it? Um, and then kind of how frequently does it make sense to tune up your building? Yes, I'm unmuted, thank you. Yeah, great, great question, Molly. And I think appropriate time to kind of think of this tune-up aspect right now. Um, I guess we, we the, the word, let's talk about the word tune for a minute. I mean, when we think of tune, right? Uh, at least I don't know about you, but what comes to mind is music. Um, what comes to mind is maybe a radio station, you know, you're kind of dialing in. I know nowadays everybody have a podcast, so we might, you know, not think about that static, you know, on your radio where you're trying to dial into that frequency, right? So um, kind of two questions come to mind when you, when, you, when you think of tuning, right? One is kind of what sound do you want to hear? You know, what melodious harmony you want to hear, right? And the, the second one is kind of what do you need to do to get it, right? So back to the radio analogy, right? You, you may have your favorite station, You've listened to it many, many times over, so you kind of know what it sounds like. But now you're trying to dial into it, right? And you want to tune that radio station. And when you get to it, you recognize your favorite, you know, host or whatever, and you know you hit it, right? So that we, we, this tune-up analogy is really an analogy, right? This word is something we just it's something we use all the time. Like in in Molly's intro, she talked about the bike or the car. You know, we we take our cars to the shop. So building tune-up is similar, right? Um, we ask those same two questions, right? What is it that we want from our building? How do we want our buildings to operate, right? And then question number two is, how, what what do we need to do to get it? And so, um, again, in the beginning, in Molly's intro, she touched on kind of two words, right? Um, measurement and management, right? And so um, there's this... Um, famous quote, I'm sure many of you have heard of it from the, the great uh, management guru, uh, Peter Drucker, who said, um, you know, you can't manage what you don't measure or something to this effect. And so in tune up and benchmarking, the benchmarking is kind of like the measurement arm, the tune up is kind of the management arm, right? You can't manage what you don't measure. So in my experience, um, I'm coming at it from a kind of training and coaching standpoint, where we have worked with several um, building operators over the years, building owners, in this bigger, broader topic called building commissioning. And we, we train on that at University of Wisconsin College of Engineering. We certify providers um, in with various commissioning certifications. But a, a small, uh, relatively small aspect of building commissioning is building tune-up, you know, especially for existing buildings because commissioning covers both new construction buildings, but the land share of buildings in, in, in the whole country in America is uh, existing buildings. In fact, I'll argue every new building that's built, it becomes existing, right? So tune-up is very important. And I've seen where, I'll just give you a quick scenario. I mean, um, with, we, we, I have worked with some um, building operators um, because we actually partner at the University of Wisconsin with another um, university in New York who have um, very extensive experience in benchmarking. And um, we've actually worked with some building operators who actually build, bring their buildings to class, <laughs> right? And um, we teach them certain um, techniques um, for tuning up, you know, to look at the control sequences of, of operation like Anne spoke about earlier, right? Um, measure temperature, pressure, relative humidity, uh, carbon dioxide, um, and other things like that. And then this is now asking, doing the measurement side of, 
what do we want to see? What, what do we want to hear in terms of our building systems and components? And then no, just using you know, engineering technology and techniques, we now implement some management things. So for example, we would uh, look at scheduling, right? Some systems, they turn them on too, too late, you know? Um, so by the time the occupants come to the building, you know, they're not warm enough or cool enough. Or sometimes they turn them on too early. So, you know, so the, if, if you turn it on too late or too early, can it, it, well, actually with the too early, you might get the building ready too soon when there are no occupants. So if you can just shift that timing on the scheduling, you can save some energy there, right? There is heating and cooling at the same time, which I think Jessica touched on a little bit, right? You're kind of fighting, two systems are fighting, right? You're heating and you're cooling it back or you're cooling it and you're heating it back up. That's a waste of energy. Um, leakage, you know, um, in, in, in valves, you know, where a lot of older buildings, especially have pneumatic valves, which is use compressed air. And if there's leakage there, the valves aren't closing or opening fully like they should. And the list goes on. Okay, here's one that's a, a pet peeve of mine. Um, sensors that need calibrating, right? Garbage in, you've heard of Gigo, right? G-I-G-O, garbage in, garbage out. If you have a sensor that's reading the wrong temperature and you're controlling off of that, you're not going to ever control your building properly. So recalibrating sensors, which is a fairly, you know, um, not very difficult thing to do, need to be done on a regular basis. So I'll stop there, but I'll just say that tune-ups, just think of it, think of your, your favorite radio station, right? <laughs> you want to hear that music come through melodiously. And, and if your building isn't, you know, tuned in just right, you're just going to have problems of many sorts. And of course, energy is a big, big one. And, and energy uh, wasted is usually hitting the bottom line. It's going gonna, it's gonna to end up in dollar signs and you're going to be paying more. So I'll stop there, but I'm looking forward to hear questions of, of others. If, if anything that I said um, stimulate some questions on tune-up, um, we, we'll try and get to that later. Thanks, Molly. And I'd like to riff on that just a little bit. Thank you. I love that analogy, Ian, of, of sort of keeping your building humming, <laughs> right? The right, at the right tune. Um, and just as a little, you know, we identified this as a, a good approach because it's operating on like building operations. So it's really looking at your existing building, um, your existing equipment and saying, how, how, how do we get the most out of this equipment, right? How do we sort of do all the things that we need to do by those sort of maintenance? So it's really, it's really kind of checking out to make sure everything is doing what it's supposed to be doing, set the way that it should be set, achieving everything that it needs to achieve in the most energy efficient way. Um, and so it's not about kind of these big capital investments um, in kind of like shiny new things, but it's really sort of taking this approach of, you know, we, we want to be making the most of, of what we have on site. Um, and so that means tune-ups are, are one of those, again, they're, they're really based on low cost, no cost measures. Um, so you can really save a lot of energy and have a really fast turn, return on investment. It's, you know, data is telling us it's like two to three years of, uh, on return on the, the cost of your, of your tune-up. If, you know, and that's on the high end of, of cost because tune-ups um, and maybe Ian, if you could talk a little bit about like the, the who does a tune-up, right? Like I think you, you know, a lot of folks who do that um, is tune-ups can be contracted. Um, they can be existing service. Uh, they can be done by existing service providers, or it can be building facilities, folks that are already operating a building. Um, and so we've been, you know, doing, having a lot of conversations about what um, professional experience and, and certifications kind of make, you know, are evidence of folks that have the the um, expertise to do that. But would you mind, you know, talking a yeah, little bit more yeah, about Yeah, absolutely, that? absolutely. So um, like you just said, uh, Jessica, I mean, you can have that third party commissioning provider or third party contractor, someone who has experience with testing and adjusting and balancing, TAB. Um, so, there are many folks, professionals in the industry that can help with tuning up, right? It could be um, an engineer, mechanical engineering firm, consulting firm. It could be a TAB firm. 
but also, and I'm re this is really near and dear to my heart, is um, the building operators themselves. Many building operators are very savvy with their systems and understand how their systems operate, or, or even better, some of them are maybe not savvy yet, but eager to learn and understand what's going on. Because guess what? They're the first ones that get all this call. You know, this complaint call of too hot or too cold, which, by the way, is the most famous um, <laughs> complaint still today, right, despite all of the technology that we have. And so um, at the university, we, we come alongside all those parties, whether it's engineer, architect sometimes, TAB consultant, or even the building operators will come to our programs and we can train them on some of these things. You know, and then you mentioned certification as well. Um, certification gets, it, it does a couple of things. One is it, it, it drives the, the training because many people somehow, you know, if they're, if they're going to get certified, they might feel more encouraged to go through the training <laughs> to get the certification, right? But also it does also, it, it's a kind of, it, it gives value to that individual and, and lets others know that, hey, I'm capable, you know, I have gone through this training, I have gone through this coaching, and I am certified to tune up or, or whatever the case may be. So, so those are just some thoughts I, I, I have to share. And again, if anyone have any questions in the chat, please, please either just, just drop them in there and we can um, get to them. Great. Um, I'm going to ask one or two more questions, and then I'm going to turn it to audience questions. Um, there's a lot of great ones coming in. Um, please feel free to put your questions into the Q&A box on the uh, lower sort of center of your screen. Um, and we will also call questions from the chat, but the Q&A is just a little bit easier um, for me to moderate. So I wanted to circle back to Jill. Um, Jill, what kinds of um, insights have you gained about your buildings from benchmarking? Um, I would say that um, the measuring of the, da the data, the data in Portfolio Manager, I think for us, we what we're looking forward more is the benchmarking aspect of how we perform um, relative to our peers in the area. So um, I don't know if we've gained as much, we have all the data. I mean, we have, as Anne was saying, when you've got 20 years of data or sort of 10 or more in Portfolio Manager, you have a lot of data. What do you do with it? Like, what, what are you supposed to be looking at? And after a while, what does it really mean? And so I think that's, you know, we've, We've progressed to the point where we can get all of our data in and we understand what our data is. And we had some challenges with that along the way, especially um, when we installed solar. Um, we had to learn a whole new way of putting in our data correctly and going back and fixing it when we realized we'd put five years of data in incorrectly and that wasn't going to really accomplish anything. But I think we're looking forward to the benchmarking part of this to show where we really stand um, within our community and then what our goals really should be, even though we have a very good Energy Star score, what more can we do? So I guess that's where we stand in the sort of benchmarking process. That's great. Um, one of my favorite benchmarking stories, um, which happened in the city of Minneapolis, um, but I don't even know um, what the building was called or who it was managed by, uh, but this was a building that was built to lead standards. Um, and the benchmarking um, efficiency metrics that the building operator got from um, from the city's benchmarking program indicated that the building, it was a multifamily um, like apartment building with covered parking on the ground floor, indicated that the building was like way out of whack. Um, it was consuming way more energy per square foot than other peer buildings. To Jill's point, you can kind of see, um, use benchmarking to figure out how you compare to the national peer buildings as well as your local community peer buildings. Um, and it turned out that the 
uh, ground floor parking garage was operating a um, in-ground heating system 24-7, 365 days a year. So they were heating their garage in the summer, uh, which is why their building energy benchmarking scores were so bad. So um, ideally it would be a process that you're, where you're like Jill and Anne are describing, you're entering your data monthly so you can find out if there's anything really out of whack before it ends up with a big bill. Um, but if nothing else, annually, you'll have a sense of how you're performing. And if there's something really wrong, you'll probably be performing poorly. And um, and hopefully your building tune-up will identify and fix that. Um, so uh, again, put any questions that you have in the chat. Um, I think I'm going to switch to audience Q&A, um, if that's OK. There's some really great questions from the audience. And I feel like those always get neglected. So let's see. Um, I think I will go to, uh, I'll go to Jessica with this one um, from Amanda Lewis. Um, for considering building energy benchmarking, were there any equity concerns considered, like focusing on uh, LMI, low and medium income areas, or using mapping tools to determine the areas in most need? Yeah, thanks for this question. Um, some of you that might be familiar with city processes um, may have heard the, the term ResG before, racial equity and social justice initiative. And it's our best practice for considering the impacts of any of our policies or programs um, at the city on, um, on racial equity um, or, or um, low and moderate income. Um, Madisonians. And so we've sort of taken a look at this from, from many angles to get an understanding of impacts, both positive, potential impacts, both positive and um, potentially negative that might be landing disproportionately um, on our residents of color, on our low to moderate income neighbors, um, to really kind of get an understanding. And you know, a, a key consideration here is this is focused on commercial non-residential buildings. And so um, this is really asking that our commercial buildings are operating efficiently. Um, we do have an understanding that um, some buildings that are, uh, you know, demand lower rents um, typically might be smaller. Um, they might be owned, um, you know, um, by or operated by folks with fewer kind of like financial or staff resources. And so this is kind of, we looked at this a little bit from like the small business angle, right? And really thinking, what do our small business owners um, need in terms of support um, to be able to, you know, successfully benchmark and tune up. And that was one of the reasons that we were really thinking about, you know, making sure that we're um, making um, low cost options. So benchmarking tune ups, again, like we said, are really those those low cost approaches for um, efficiency gains, as well as providing, uh, you know, assistance and resources. And so I think I mentioned at the top that you know, having a help desk, having really clear program guidance, being sure that um, we have an onboarding period for folks to be able to get their an questions answered, to be able to get assistance, choosing Energy Star Portfolio Manager, um, a free online resource that's really well supported by EPA. You know, all of those are really to like relieve that um, administrative burden on all of our program participants, which we know is especially important um, for small business owners. Um, as far as, you know, we have looked at where, you know, these covered buildings are. Typically, they're in our commercial corridors, as you might imagine, our larger commercial buildings are situated. Um, but this is something that we're able to kind of get a better look at right now without benchmarking um, across our city. We don't have a clear understanding of the, you know, spatial distribution of energy efficiency in our buildings, um, you know, and being able to ask, you know, are there um, areas within our city that might need uh, more attention, more assistance, um, you know, whatever that might look like, you know, that is one of the outcomes that we're hoping for is to be able to take a really data driven approach of, of, of how we're addressing energy efficiency um, in, in our city. Um, and, I'll, and I'll also make just a, I would be happy to follow up offline as we do have energy efficiency programs um, that we partner, actually we partner with Sustain Dane on um, our energy efficiency for naturally occurring affordable housing initiative um, works with um, Sustain Dane and other partners, Elevate Energy, 
to provide energy efficiency um, and water efficiency upgrades and renewable energy um, to multifamily affordable housing in Madison. And so the building energy savings program is kind of just one aspect of how we're thinking about and trying to move um, energy efficiency forward in our community in ways that are gonna be right fit for right building um, and also providing those kind of equitable solutions too. Great, and I see uh, some of our panelists are answering questions in real time in the Q&A section, so that's great. Um, so I'll stick with you for a moment, Jessica, and then I'm going to uh, ask my next question of Ian. Um, for Jessica, are there training programs or webinars for city engineers? I'm guessing this is like your operators who operate city buildings um, about benchmarking, and we could even just expand this to just sort of plans to help building operators get on board with tune-ups. So are there training programs or webinars um, either existing for city engineers or that you're planning for the future um, for building operators across the city? And especially, uh, this is a great point, especially for people who've been in their jobs a long time and might not be sold on the idea of thinking about sustainability. That's a lot packed into one question. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> let's start with, are there training programs for city engineers? Um, yes, so I will say our, our city engineers that operate our buildings are going to be pretty similar to the folks that are operating, um, you know, similar size buildings uh, across the city. Um, and so, yes, so there are training programs available for both, um, you know, just using Energy Star Portfolio Manager and, um, you know, that's really well resourced. We're also going to be developing um, trainings and tools specific to build the Building Energy Savings Program so that it's very um, specific to us. Um, but also so that the benchmarking stuff is really well supported. And then those trainings, there's a there's a variety of um, sort of certifications and qualifications that folks can seek that give them the knowledge and expertise for tuning up building energy systems. Um, there's quite a, a number of those kind of programs out there. Um, and, um, you know, some of them are available even for free. And I know that UW also provides some training. So I might um, I, I might kick it over to Ian to, to talk more about what UW um, pro provides and has in the works. Um, but I'll also say that, um, you know, we wanted to make sure that we've done a, a good deal of research. The Midwest Energy, um, Energy Efficiency Association um, offers, um, uh, I believe it's building operator certification or BOC certification. That's one of the ways that folks can get trained. That certification is um, one program where, you know, like Ian said, you kind of bring your building to class. You really are sort of trained to take a look at how the systems are operating and make kind of any kind of tweaks or, or repairs necessary. And that one in particular is um, provided regularly. Um, we've been in communication with those, you know, if they're like, you need 10 people want to get certified and we don't have a training for scheduled for your the timeline that you need, we can make it happen. Um, and Focus on Energy provides a full um, reimbursement for completing that training. And so that's just one path that um, folks that are already kind of operating buildings that might want to, you know, level up their skill set or get that certification that's available in our area. Um, and, and it's, it's no cost um, once you've completed the program. Um, and so I'll, I'll I, um, and if you want to jump in or should I, Ian, talk about UW stuff first. I just wanted to say that uh, Energy Star Portfolio Manager has all sorts of free training. And I just Googled their training sessions and they have a live Portfolio Manager 101 training session that's free on January 10th. So anybody that's interested in learning about Energy Star Portfolio Manager just on a basic level, um, there's that, that would be a good class. And then it progressively we'll go di deeper into uh, topics with, you know, Energy Star 201, 301, et cetera. And, and you can benchmark any, any type of building, uh, you know, churches, office buildings, medical office buildings, data centers, wastewater treatment plants, you know, pretty much any kind of building, you can benchmark it. Great. 
And Ian, we'll go over to you just to talk about what uh, UW has in terms of resources. Yeah, so um, we, in the Office of um, Interdisciplinary Professional Programs, which is the arm of the College of Engineering that focuses on, um, you know, uh, professional development for um, professionals, building operators, and so on. Um, we kind of have, we have a, a credit side and a non-credit side. For the credit side, that's a master's program that takes um, you know, longer um, through the three years. But it sounds like this question is looking for kind of something shorter webinars. So the non-credit um, portion of our um, office would probably be more appropriate there. And, and in that um, segment, we have um, several commissioning programs. You heard me speak of commissioning earlier. Um, so building commission is really this quality process that helps building owners to uh, get a more efficient run building, right? The, to meet certain functional performance. Now, um, the commissioning that would be more uh, tied to tune-ups would be existing building commissioning. And so we have some courses on that, a two-day course on the existing building commissioning process. Um, we have another course that's like a one-hour um, anytime, anywhere, asynchronous course on the commissioning process. So if someone wants to log in and get information from that course, that's an easy one hour. And those are the two that really come to mind. Now, later on, actually right now, as we speak, I'm developing a, a certification program for existing buildings, which will have a, a combination of our two-day existing building commissioning course and a building tune-up um, course with a partner um, uh, organization in New York, City University of New York, um, where, where if any individual is interested in that, they can take our two-day course in existing building commissioning and pair that with, um, right now we're thinking it's going to be like maybe a three-day course in building tune-up, where you can actually build, bring your building to class <laughs> and, and learn about how to tune it up or you can use a, a, a fictitious building that we would provide and then take that knowledge and take it back to your real building and, and tune it up. So that, that's coming up uh, this uh, summer is when we're gonna launch the first version of that. Um, and again, that's just a, a existing building commission course paired with a tune-up course. And if you're successful in an exam, you can get certified. Um, in, in building tune-up and existing building commissioning. So that's kind of what we have right now to offer. And I'll just comment that this approach of partnering with local universities and, and building operators really um, is innovative. I, I haven't seen a city do, um, tune-ups have been part of a couple of different benchmarking policies of those 40-ish that I talked about um, that exist nationwide, but um, uh, as far as partnering to really bolster the knowledge of local building operators and owners and occupants about running buildings efficiently and these operations and maintenance-based approaches, which is really what Ian and Jessica are talking about, um, is this is just fantastic because you can imagine, say you have a larger building that's 50,000 square feet plus that does need to get a tune-up every four years under the policy, that same operator um, might work with other buildings that are smaller and so can um, can disseminate these best practices across portfolios, which is which is great. This is really a fantastic way to bolster the knowledge um, of these important best practices in Madison. I love it. Um, uh, one quick point there, Molly, if I, if I may. Um, in my discussion with some of uh, the folks in, in New York that we're partnering with at University of Wisconsin for this new certificate, um, and, and partnering with building operators in the future, this this we've been using this term human in the loop, <laughs> right? Because a lot of um, more sophisticated buildings with controls and all of this, they they there's a trend to to just focus on just the dials, you know, the the, the technology, and not keep the human in the loop. And so one of the things we keep reminding ourselves as as we work together is. We really need to empower these um, building operators and and you know consultants in some cases because not every building owner um, 
um, wants to go that route. Some building owners actually want to engage with third party consultants. So wherever the human is, whether it's third party or local building operator, we need to keep them in the loop so that they can be empowered and edified as to how their building is actually operating and then tune that dial, like I said, to, to get them using Jessica's term, humming, <laughs> humming really nicely and, and save energy and, um, and save, uh, reduce uh, carbon emissions and all of these other things that we, we, we are interested in. Fantastic. Um, I see that uh, Jill is already typing an answer to this one. Um, so I will start off with um, Jessica and then maybe Jill and Anne can jump in. Jessica, do you have plans for um, so that uh, other folks, other building operators and owners in Madison can benefit from the lessons learned from folks like Jill and Anne about benchmarking and tune ups and benefits? That's a great question. Um, thanks for lifting that one up, Molly. Um, you know, we have been in conversation about what it looks like to um, to have kind of a community of practice in Madison around um, energy benchmarking and tune-ups. And, you know, this would really be a, a, a group effort. It would be a, a group project, or maybe I don't want to use the word group project because sometimes people don't, <laughs> sometimes people don't like those, but it really would be a collaborative effort. And so, um, as part of the, you know, we've been talking about as part of the kind of framework and scaffolding that, that goes with the program is being able to share out communications. And so, you know, connecting with folks like Jill and folks with Anne to have these, you know, have them be, give them the opportunity to talk about their experiences, whether that's in a forum like this, or, you know, uh, a little case study that, that could get shared out, or we have some, um, you know, folks that might want to join a community of practice where we could you know, visit buildings together, right? Like maybe we we visit one of Jill's buildings, you know, with her, or maybe there's others in the community that um, that want to host, right? And there's lots of, we've had a lot of conversations about kind of what that would look like. We haven't sort of gelled anything, um, anything together yet. I think this has been one of, and, and shout out, thank you so much to Stan Dane for, for creating this opportunity for us to kind of get together and share experience and talk together. This is kind of what that starts to look like. Um, and we know that there are folks in Madison that are already on their energy efficiency journey, right? Um, it is like, I think Ian used the words, um, continuous improvement. Um, you know, it, energy efficiency isn't kind of a fix it and forget it kind of, um, kind of, kind of thing. It's something that we um, that we integrate into our business and into our practices. And so being able to like go down that path together would be fantastic. Um, and kind of what that might look like, I think depends on our partners and the, their availability and what they think would work and the needs of folks that want to learn more, what format is best, what, um, how often would it be, something like that. Um, but we do know that, that uh, we want to be able to lift up those stories and share those experiences. And troubleshoot if there's any, you know, any bumps along the road, you know, so that we're able to, um, you know, share those lessons learned and, and no one's kind of out, you know, an island on their own, um, but really has the support that they need. That sounds great. And knowing that we're right uh, close to the end, um, Jill, it looked like you were going to say something, and then I'm going to do a quick round robin for everybody to say um, what their call to action is um, for the audience. So go ahead, Jill, and then we'll do call to action. Yeah, I just wanted to um, sort of mention that I have been in contact with um, uh, our utility providers, MG&E. So putting together um, basically like large energy users is our group of people that we work with. And um, Kathy Koontz with the Dane County um, Climate Champions and trying to basically build a network of sort of like energy management user group. But I like your community and practice is a, probably a way better name, but <laughs> of like so like-minded and like buildings because it is it's just different it's it's we each have our own set of challenges kind of that are sort of unique because of the size and the type of building and i mean mine are all office buildings so i don't know much about other types of buildings so i would be helpful in one realm but i think working with the utility company as them helping like do this initiative would probably make the most sense all right, we're going to chalk that up to your call to action. Um, yep. Anne, Ian? 
All right, so um, we've been talking about tune-up and building benchmarking, um, energy benchmarking. I'd say, um, just, just to remind you all, the concert pianist will have their piano tuned to produce musical harmony, right? The responsible driver will have their car tuned regularly to have safety and reliability. So my call to action is let's have our buildings tuned up to increase energy efficiency. And um, we've been dialoguing here, but um, let, let's continue the dialogue. I mean, feel free to reach out to me. My email address is imacintosh2 at wisc.edu. imacintosh2, the number two, and that macintosh is m-c-i-m-c-i-n-t-o-s-h, the number two at wic.edu to continue the discussion. So that's my call to action. Great, and real quick, we'll pop it over to Anne to close us out. Uh, my call to action would be uh, learn to, how to benchmark now. Get all your buildings set up in Energy Star way ahead of when it becomes mandatory. That way you've got all your stuff done and you just have to flip the switch, share the info and boom, you're done. And then if you're the first company, maybe you'll have some bragging rights that you were first to comply. Kudos to you, you know? Love it. Any other calls to action? Didn't mean to skip you, Jessica, but I felt like your community of practice was pretty inspiring. Thanks, Molly. No, I mean, I, I just want to express my gratitude to uh, to Sistine Dane once again for, for hosting this. For all the great questions, I know there's some that we didn't get to, and I'm hoping that we do have a chance to maybe respond to those, we'll capture them and, and respond to those. And if you want to reach out to me, please do. I am jchrice2 at cityofmadison.com. Well, um, this has been a really, really great hour together. We have recorded this session. It'll be sent out to everyone that registered. Feel free to share it um, with others that you may, you may be in your community that are interested in this topic. Um, we'll also share a couple of the resources and the contact information that was, um, Ian and Jessica shared. So let's, let's keep talking about this, keep bringing up questions and um, let's get set up. Let's, let's, let's make that part of our New Year's resolutions. So thank you so much, everyone. Okay, bye-bye now. Bye. Thanks Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Bye.